when you start with four pods, uh, you might be in a situation you say where you've got a, a thousands of products um, and you need to be able to upload them into the system. Or you might be coming from a different point of sale system altogether and you've been able to export the data from there. Um, or thirdly, uh, you are a brand new business, you've just got a list of products that you've typed up on an Excel spreadsheet, even a menu for restaurants, a multitude of different types of scenarios where you decide that yes uh, the import facility will help me so I've just created a, a blank database on my own computer right now and as you can see there's no items on the database other than an open item and I'm going to leave that there for now there is no database uh, in my system at all I haven't preloaded a database or anything like that so on the your 4 pos DVD and on the website uh, on our knowledge base we've got a 4 pos upload example file and simply there's just two lines in there. There's a test item one and test item two. Important to note as well, uh, we had a customer this week that emailed us a database that they would like to import. Um, but what they've done is they've created multiple sheets here at the bottom. So they've got sh a sheet for uh, department one and department two, etc., etc. Um, it's better to create one sheet so and have it a column for the departments in there than to try and do it in multiple sheets if you do it on multiple sheets you'll have to save each of those sheets as a separate spreadsheet or a file uh, a difference uh, and a separate csv file and import them individually which basically increases the the risk of problems that you will occur or that will occur uh, much higher uh, also important to check through your list um, i mean if you look at my system yeah, or my data right here, now I've got item 2 that the selling price uh, is 799 Rand. Um, good idea to possibly change it and make your format your cells and make it numbers. Don't make it currency because then there will be an R in the fields as well uh, or whatever your currency might be, R for Rand and dollar or whatever the case may be. And then another thing for customers with very big databases and you do have separate VATs on the system, in other words, different tax rates on the system, create a column for VAT uh, or tax then and specify whether the product is zero rated VAT or not. And then lastly, make sure that there's no other columns or no other information here. If you're not 100% sure because you received the file from somebody or somewhere, uh, rather go in here and delete these columns. Um, just simply right click on them, doesn't matter how far you go, right click and say delete. And then you know you've got nothing on that side. Um, I know I said last thing, but a very important thing is you're going to be saving this file as a CSV, which stands for Comma Separated Value. That means that the file that you're going to import is separated. Each of these columns will be separated with a comma. Now, if you've got commas in the description, it will split the fields up and you will land up arguments like, here is one, two, three, four, five, six columns. You will end up with uh, a line on your system that has seven columns. Just to prove the point quickly, um, let me modify this one and then I'll show you what I mean. So let's say you've got a description there, test one. So what I'll typically do is I'll just go and do a search on the uh, columns that could possibly have commas in, do a control H on Excel and replace comma with space. Okay, I won't do it now. Let me go and show you first of all what it does. So to get this file, an Excel file into a, a CSV file, you simply will cl click file and then you'll say save as. Um, and you effectively want to get to one of the other formats. So if you just click on save as, it'll bring up all the possibilities for you. So let's look at the databases. Yes, I'm on my DVD folder. It's okay. Let me run it from there. And where you save it doesn't really matter. What is important is you spe that you specify that it's a CSV file. Okay, so now the file will be called for pos upload example CSV. I'm just for, for my own purposes going to copy that path of mine so I know exactly where it's stored. Create a folder for yourself called temp or something like that so where you can know exactly where your file is going to be kept and where, where to import it from. All right, so I'm clicking on save. It's telling me that it will contain features that is not really supported. Do you want to keep it in that format? Yes, for now, I want to keep it in that format. All right, so now we're ready to go back into the back office program uh, of 4POS. We click on utilities. 
uh, we go to imports and then import stock items ask me then where is the file now I've just copied that whole folder so I'm going to say it's in that folder there and as you can see on my screen is two files there with similar names the one is the Excel file and the other one is the CSV file so I want the CSV file itself again if you make it nice and big over there you'll see that it says comma separated values okay just to prove a point again and I will now double click on that file and there it clearly shows me on the very first screen that my items are nicely organized um, the first line from the Excel spreadsheet has become my heading line as you can see and the items at the bottom of that now look at line one there uh, you see that is test comma item one okay now it could work it could not work I suggest you don't try it okay it most likely gonna give you troubles so let's go back to our file so that I can show you why it won't work okay and again it gives immediately gives a problem um, so let me go and open up another Explorer page quickly Explorer also is one of those wonderful little programs you can have as many of them open as you wish all right so I'm gonna right click on this file and I'm say I'm gonna say open it with notepad in other words I don't want to open it just double click on it because then it'll open it up in Excel again I don't want that all right and as you can see here we said in the heading here no decimals uh, and so forth but again I didn't listen now look at the difference between line one and line two line one has got a brief inverted commas around that description and line two does not um, in this case I'm lucky it most likely will work okay to import it but don't take a chance now you can go and edit it here if you want to what I'm going to do is simply just go and fix it up in my Excel file because I saved it as a separate file and my original file is still correct okay so let me go and fix it up there and take my comma out and then I'm simply going to save it as a, a CSV file again all right and there's the CSV file that I saved earlier yes at request yes I want to overwrite it yes thank you I want to keep it that format and we're going to jump back to our four pass folder and we're going to try the upload again all right so now I specified my CSV that looks much better now I can click on next and now there's the grid the grid will basically to show you let me get the Excel spreadsheet at the background and then the program here so now you can go and look at the two next to each other it makes it a lot easier maybe if your headings were not clear enough okay so my barcode field uh, would be my barcode or item number that I have in my example okay you can have also have a quickie and obviously if you wanted to use a quickie please do not insert or import the same number otherwise it will create a duplicate you can't have the same number in the barcode and the quickie in the field you, it's got to be something different uh, quickie again uh, for those that don't know yet it could be a shortcut key I could make that first one TI1 for test item 1 and TI2 and so on for now I don't have it I don't need it display name will be my description of my product over there uh, receipt name I want the same so I'm going to use the same description stock group um, I didn't create a stock group in my spreadsheet stock group will be the group that I want to use for stock taking purposes I'm going to use the same department number for stock group and pricing group and then basically in didn't put a supplier in there so I don't need any of that selling price I do have so I'm going to put my selling price inclusive in cost I do have so I'm going to specify that and the VAT in my case it doesn't matter whether I specify it or not both of them will come through as 14% um, all right and that's basically all the fields or the mapping that I need to do about my product I'm going to click next it tells me there's two records in that file which is 100% correct and I'm going to say update and for boss response it says update complete okay uh, let's go and see if it worked so if I go to stock rate editor main stock by detail there's my two products in the database now all the other fields have been populated my cost has been put in my selling price has been put in as an override price um, and I'm ready to go I can start selling those two products now immediately on my system um, I do not suggest you try to use this option to try and keep on adding to the database uh, simply because as I said earlier you know if you make a booboo let's assume now that you've in, in, in let's assume for the moment that you've uploaded a hundred or two hundred or five hundred products 
and now two weeks later you say well I've got another hundred products that I want to do your chances of making mistakes is quite huge so if you are going to do on it when you say well I don't have a choice I really don't want to sit here and do one by one 100 products then uh, make a backup before you start because if there's a boo-boo um, again there's no uh, there's no undo option there's no uh, let's reverse back to the previous one can you quickly delete it for me no we can't you can restore your backup and then upload again and try it again second time around until you're happy with it uh, with databases also you know we on a daily basis uh, talk to customers and say the same thing when I have a crack in a wall don't break the wall down and rebuild uh, the wall the mo chances are most likely that I'm going to land up with another crack in the new wall better to fix that crack so if you've got a database that's not 100% right, better to go back and go and fix the problems or the errors and mistakes that you've got in the database rather than redoing the database and say, I'm going to wipe it all out, uh, uh, I'm going to start over. Starting over, uh, like in marriage, never really works. Enjoy.